In a press conference today, Yuri Slavkovsky revealed the truth behind why he signed this specific contract with the Montreal Canadiens, and he spoke out about top prospect Ivan Dimitrov joining the team very soon. We're going to get into all of that, plus some details were revealed about Caden Gooley's contract extension and why the talks maybe haven't gone as fast as we thought by Kent Hughes, and we also got to get into Alex Burrows and his new role with the Montreal Canadiens, all coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. We're going to get right into it, Jesse. And we got to start with Alex Burrows. Now, as a lot of you know, Alex Burrows was, since 2021, the power play coach, special teams guy of Montreal. He served as an assistant coach for Laval before that. Of course, he had a nice long career in the NHL with Vancouver and Ottawa. And as of today, Jesse, we heard the news. The Habs added Alex Burrows and former NHLer as well, Lori Korpikoski, to their coaching staff. Korpikoski, on his own, played over 600 games in the NHL, Jesse, a very solid player. He's 37. He'll be working a lot with the European uh, players. But Alex Burrows, what do you think about this move? People seem to forget Alex Burrows was a 35 goal scorer in the, I don't know why that popped up, 35 goal scorer in his heyday in the NHL. And I feel like this is a very, very good role for him. One, to stay closer to his family. And two, just in terms of his skill set, what he'll be able to give back to this organization and our prospects. And it's such a perfect balance for Alex Burrows where he's still around the game that he loves. Of course, that long, you know, storied career, then coaching the AHL, then coaching the NHL. Like, that's a lot of hockey, right? Mm -hmm. But now he's finding that balance where he can still be involved in the game, but also helping the Habs, helping their prospects, helping their players, right? We know that the Montreal Canadiens, Kent Hughes, Jeff Gordon have put such an increased emphasis on player development, right? So he's just part of that new wave, joining Paul Byron, Next to be joined by Carey Price. I'm, yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. But, you know, these these former players, right? Those are often the best for player experiences because they get so much disrespect right away from the players because they know this person did it. This player, Alex Burrows, scored 35 goals in the NHL. It counts, right? And again, just bringing in another player to look after our European prospects, another former NHLer, I think is just a great work by Kent Hughes and Co. Playing the Dragon is a big thing on his resume. This guy had a knack for clutch moments and had a knack for playing with other really good players. Of course, he spent a lot of time with the Sedins in his heyday, right? So he knows how to play good with other good players, but he knows how to put up 20, 30 goal seasons on his own. And, you know, playing in the NHL doesn't always corroborate to coaching especially not special teams but Burroughs didn't do a terrible job though some people will probably disagree they're probably really glad he's gone Marty also has a hand in it you know we're not going to get into that whole conversation here but I think this is ultimately a much uh well I'm not going to say a better role for him because we don't know but this is a role that I'm very comfortable with and I'm excited to see what he can do with this new responsibility but let's move into the next section of the video Jesse and we got to talk about what is the key to the rebuild now Kent Hughes Jesse He's not been shy about being patient, and we got some interesting details in his presser that we didn't really spend too much time talking about over the last couple days. The first thing, though, I wanted to talk about is some of the details on Marcia So Marcia So came out and basically said, well, he did say Montreal was probably the second most likely team to get him. Now, of course, he ended up signing in Nashville for a long-term deal, and it seems pretty clear from what Kent Hughes said that he wasn't ready to go past three years. And so patience, Jesse, is the key. And when we're talking about that, I wanted to get into something else he said about Gooley. Because Gooley doesn't have that extension, Slav does. Kent said it's not all about getting it done fast, it's about getting it settled the right way. Discussions perhaps didn't start at the same rhythm as those with Slav, but we'll see if we can get a contract done this summer. If we can't, we'll wait like we did with Cole, and we'll have until September next year to get something done. This kind of thing is really awesome to hear, Jesse. It just shows that that patience is the key to the rebuild. There's no rush to do anything. Even Gooley, who fans are clamoring for an extension for, Kent's like, well, wait and see. We don't have to rush this, and I, I really love to see that theme. Whether it's contracts, trades, you know, Kent is taking the same attitude as he does towards this rebuild. You know, slow and steady is what wins the race, mm -hmm. right? But so interesting here that Kent Hughes almost convinced Jonathan Marcheseau to come over mm -hmm. here. It almost happened that it, you know, in an interview, he said, you know, I really like what Kent Hughes has been doing since he's been taken over. And also, I really like what Marty did. And I found that very interesting, maybe the possibility mm -hmm. of kind of working together and what we could do there. And for me, hearing that from a player that just scored over 40 goals last year, it's nice to, you would tend to think that other players in the NHL feel a similar way. And that's so big for us, for, for these free agents. And I think in our heart of hearts, we knew now is not our time. You know, next year is really for the free agents, even though we're not kind of ruling anything out. This year is more about the trades. I think the writing was on the wall. Kent's really sticking to it, right? But he has that plan, being patient, 
doing it the right way, which I think is going to be so beneficial. Like we talked about March so oh, yeah. specifically, you know, that was thinking the same way about us. We also said that shorter term thing. It makes a lot of sense. Now getting back to Caden Gooley, right? Like, of course we love this player so much. This guy's a stud. He's going to do nothing but keep getting better and better. In my opinion, I'm wondering though, Josh, like as this kind of goes on just a little bit, even though they don't need to rush it, would you be happy with a four to five year type of deal for Gooley? Because I could see that being what eventually happens. I, I could see a war where it happens. Like Aiden Gooley has shown that he's, uh, you know, potentially that nut first pairing left D of the future, though he's also shown the ability to play on the right side. He's shown lots of leadership. He's one of the faster defensemen in the NHL when you're talking about top speed, but his point production just hasn't picked up. I, you know what? I'm kind of on board with Kent Jesse in the sense of like, let's just give it another year because right now, based on the pure point production, this was a bit of a down year for Gooley. You don't want to handcuff yourself with a big contract that he might not live up to, even though we believe he will, but it can also benefit Gooley in the long term. Like, hey, Caden, we're going to give you another shot because based on your numbers right now, I think the contract we're ready to offer you is not going to be worth it. So to you, maybe let's play another year. You get to prove yourself, hopefully have a fully healthy season and, and we'll see where we go from there. And I kind of don't mind that. And if at the end of the day, Jesse, that extension ends up being four or five anyway, I'm cool with the two. I, I just think that I, well, the one thing that I do know is that I trust Kent Hughes and co to do what's best for the player and for the team, which is kind of goes back to what you said about Marsh. So how I think a lot of people are starting to really respect what the Habs are doing. And that four to five year deal is exactly why it makes sense because there's also that risk where Caden Gooley with a young player, you could say, you know, the longer that you wait to sign them, just the more it's going to end up costing you in real actual dollars mm -hmm. at the end of it. And there's a very good likelihood that that is the case. But I feel like even if it is, Caden Gooley will have deserved every single dollar of that, right? So, an you know, an amazing player. We know he's going to get an increased role, you know, even more so next year. seems almost so hard to say since so much is put on his young shoulders already, but he is ready for it. And we all know he's part of the long-term plan. Absolutely. Really excited to see what happens with him. And if it's not this off season, doesn't matter. I'm excited for another big season of Caden Gooley hockey. Final thing, Jesse, we got to talk about this guy again. It's Slavzilla. And the truth about his contract was kind of revealed. In this press conference, there was an 11 minute press conference with uh, Slavkovsky in Slovakia, you know, visiting family, I'm sure, just kind of living, living at home. He had to do a medical this morning, all this stuff. And there was a lot of questions about his extension. He answered a lot of them. And Jesse, he was full of all kinds of emotions from being giddy, being so, wow, this wasn't really giddy. This was his reaction to, uh, to the Slovakia versus. Uh, England question, but also he he showed some some frustration. At some is moment. Matheson in, is Matheson there here? with you? Uh, don't don't anger the big fella now. Yeah, oh no, <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay, you're right. Like this is the thing. It was an awesome interview, no. Jesse. No, no, it's, it's an awesome interview, and and I really liked a couple things he had to say. And we're gonna get into this and be a little more serious now. For the first thing, Jesse, we're going to talk about this. He did mention the meet-off, and I wanted to get into that in a second. But this is the real reason. This is the truth behind it. He said, because we were kind of surprised. We've been talking about eight, eight and a half million, maybe giving him another year. He just said, for me, it's not about money. I'll take everything. I just want to stay. I don't need any other quote other than that, Jesse. To hear that from Uri Slavkovsky, your potential franchise superstar. Now, you got the meet-off as well in that conversation. But, you know, we were uh, some of us were kind of surising. Wow, that's going to age really well. For him, it's not about the money. It's just like, give it to me and give me whatever and I want to stay. And that is, honestly, I don't think I could have manufactured a better quote to hear from him today. Because for him, it's all about winning, right? And for him, getting rid of that contract early on, he says in this interview, allows him to just focus on hockey right away and what really matters. Isn't it just so rare, though, to come across a young player who feels this way, who just puts mm -hmm. the team so far ahead of himself, right? Like, this is really what he cares about. Like, he talks about being, like, a very good team and and competing and that really being what he wants. And he sees, he thinks that we're building something special. In, an, in his own words, he said, you know, here in Montreal and just really being a part of that, getting the maximum amount of term. That's the type of commitment that he made to this team because he, he really believes in them so much, right? So, again, it's like, we kind of expected this from Slav. We expected a team-friendly deal where he falls in line with the structure. But this is how you do things right, you know, is by having that structure instead of just kind of overpaying and then having to kind of compensate by not having a, such a good defense or goalie or anything else. We're not throwing shade. Just There's countless examples, right? Kent has the vision. He's shared this with the players. They've bought into it. 
And now we're going to see the execution of this plan, which I'm so excited for. And you know what? The contract's already showing to be really good as we see Pavel Buknevich signing an eight-year extension today at $8 million per year. And Buknevich, I mean, he's, of course, done more in the NHL than Slav. He's like a 30-goal scorer. He's a perennial, you know, 60, 70, 75-point guy. But he had, what, 26 goals, 32 assists last year or something similar to that? Not that much more than Slav. And Slav's a bigger body who provides a bit more physicality and... You know, Bugnevich just signed until he's 37 years old. So it's like a bit different, right? You're going to get slapped through his prime versus Bugnevich, who's still going to be very good. Anyway, I'm not going to put down Bugnevich. I mean, I think he's going to be worth that, especially with the cap going up. But every single day, this contract's going to look better and better, Jesse. And I'm thrilled that your eye wants to stay no matter the cost, because that's the, the culture this team is building is insane. Um, Final thing, though, I just wanted to talk about this because we're all excited about your and Demidov. And of course, he was asked about it. He said, yeah, I've seen some highlights. I feel he's another great player coming to the organization. It'll be fun to see him play because I made so so many typos in these cities i'm so i'm so sorry to see him play because he's a pretty good playmaker got good hands i saw some moves he did in russia i already reached out to him and i can't wait to meet him and see him on the ice now actually jesse they did share the ice at the helinka gretzky cup i believe three years ago uh where demidov and slap there was like a little clip of them you know battling for the puck behind the net i believe and i think demidov got the best of him but it's cool to see he already reached out i'm not surprised by it but this is a dynamic duo that even if they don't end up playing a ton on the same line within the first year or two however long it is I really think that uh, in the on the power play, this could be one of the nastiest duos we see. Absolutely. Just incredible hockey IQ as well. I could see you slap again, taking on that playmaker role mm -hmm. even more, and Demidov just finishing on that. But as well, being able person. to use... You're right, right? You know, for the for those one-timers as well. But again, like, Slav is being a leader here, like reaching out to Demidov already. You know, those are important small little things. But having these players, you know, both come in from the other side of the pond, it's like reaching out to each other. It matters a lot for Ivan Demidov to feel a part of the team kind of right away. The sooner they can start working on their chemistry together, I say the better. So honestly, I'm so happy to hear this. Oh, I'm so excited. Like, I can't, this is the most exciting. We said this last year, Jesse, that this is the most excited we've been for a half season in a long time this and like even halfway through the season we said the same thing when we saw the emergence of slap this is a complete another level it's unbelievable the stuff with the let us know what you guys think about slap's comments and how he just basically would have accepted anything to stay in montreal we'd love to hear from you down below that'll do it for this episode of habs digest if you enjoy leave a like comment subscribe to the channel because we're almost at 13,000. i should have said that at the start of the video but if you're watching right now and you haven't hit that button i don't know what you're doing because we have daily content just like this that you won't want to miss i'm josh goss my co-host jesse Poirier. we'll catch you in the next one